I'm going to call tonight's meeting to order. All rise for the flag salute. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Now we're going to do roll, roll call. Council Member Murray. Present. Council Member Ryan. Here. Council Member Payne Donovan. Present. Mayor Matsumoto Wright. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Wall. Here. Council Member Sonmore. Here. Council Member Woodard. Accounted for. That concludes roll call. Thank you. Do we have any late changes to the agenda? Thank you very much. And so next will be public comment. Do we have any anyone signed up for public comment? We have Monica Wheaton. If you'll take the podium, you have five minutes to speak. Up there. The, Up on the podium. Yeah. Linwood, um, I am here today because I want to honor one of your uh, residents here in Mount Lake Terrace for such a wonderful, amazing contributions that he's done not only to the city of Mount Lake Terrace, but to the Edmonds School District. Um, and uh, I, he is a commissioner here with the Mount Lake Terrace City Council um, and uh, has been very involved with the Edmonds School District uh, for the last 17 years. Um, putting on Edmonds Comedy Night. <laughs> so through Edmonds Comedy Night, many years ago, Mount Lake Terrace, uh, sorry, Terrace Park Elementary was constructed, and it was constructed without a play shed for the rain. Um, a bunch of uh, uh, PTA members got together and decided they needed to raise money. And so this person, who is a professional comedian, uh, volunteered to put on a show to raise money to get the play shed constructed. That was 17 years ago and they funded that play shed. And for many years, he contributed uh, through the, the annual comedy night to Terrace Park Elementary. About five years ago, uh, me, uh, my group, which is the parent leaders group for the Edmonds School District, we work with the PTAs and parent leaders group across the 35 schools in our district. We took over the show and we started running that. And so I've been a member of the committee for the last seven years and we continue to do this show and we sell it out every time. It's two nights in February where we raise money for the parent leaders groups. Um, each year we raise about $30,000 that we use for uh, to fund different programs within the school district, parent leaders getting training, uh, educational programs. We've funded after school buses. We brought the ocean um, from Edmonds into our schools for about 25 different schools and about 5,000, uh, no, I don't, can't remember how many different kids, but we continue to do a world of books program where we're adding diverse books into our libraries at our schools. Um, so I really just wanted to highlight this person. Over the course of the time, I would say that we've probably raised close to $500,000 for our school district. And we continue to do this show, which is very great. Um, we have a lot of fun doing it, and we raised a lot of money doing it as well, which is wonderful. It not only uh, benefits our schools and our children and our parent leaders, but also the community as well, because it brings the community together. So this person that I wanted to honor is sitting right back there. So Kermit, will you please come up? Kermit Appio. <laughs> And if you know Kermit, you know that he loves pie. So I'm not sure how much time I have left, but I wanted to give, uh, honor you with a piece of a <laughs> gift certificate to the pie company. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. That's it for the in-person 
And we do have someone online who's going to speak. Am I live? Yes. <laughs> okay, apparently I'm not on camera, but thank you, Jennifer, and good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and Council. Virginia Clough, Liberty Lake, Washington, formerly a resident of Mount Lake Terrace and city employee. I was asked to speak to the proclamation tonight by Vanita Francisco of the DEI Commission. So thanks to her and to William Page Jr. for the opportunity. This proclamation was added to the council's agenda following the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, as many people of Asian and Pacific Islander descent experienced racism or were victims of hate crimes. I'm happy to see the work the DEI Commission and City Council are doing to educate the community and eliminate racism. For API Heritage Month, I'd like to recognize some of the outstanding leadership in the Mount Lake Terrace community from Asian American and Pacific Islander people. There are several members of the API community currently serving on our boards and commissions, including the aforementioned Kermit Apio and Scott Matsuda, who I understand are both there tonight. Kermit performed at our employee appreciation breakfast a few years back and rocked the show. And Scott was one of our go-to photographers for city events and was also chair of the former Community Policing Advisory Board. And he and his wife, Jennifer, also won an Evergreen Award for their beautiful home. A few of the notable leaders that I recall over the past 20 years include our former late state Senator Paul Shin, current state representative Cindy Rue, who wanted to be here tonight, but she's in Japan, business owners Takeo and Yuko Kikuchi, Yuko's sister Kumi and the Abe family, and of course, Mayor Kyoko Matsumoto Wright. I remember when Kyoko was appointed to serve as a planning commissioner in 2002, and during her term, the planning commission was instrumental in shaping the current vision. In 2003, the city conducted a transit-oriented development study, and in 2006, that planning commission worked with city staff, council, and community on the original town center plan that was adopted in 2007. I know Mayor Pro Tem Wall was on the planning commission, and Council Member Sonmore was on the council back then. Kyoko San Yoshi was still in school at the time, and he used to volunteer to give dance performances at city events like National Night Out. Late in 2007, there was a vacancy on the city council, and Kyoko was among 11 candidates who threw their hats into the ring. She was ultimately selected in January of 2008, and after serving two years of the vacant term, she's now, I believe, in her fourth full term on city council. Kyoko was selected as mayor pro tem in 2017, and she became mayor in late 2018 after Mayor Smith passed away. She served as mayor for over five years now. Kyoko is also the city's third female mayor, following Lois Anderson and Pat Cordova. Mount Lake Terrace has not had a lot of racial diversity on its council over the years, but with the confidence of the community and council behind Kyoko, that's now changing and her example has helped pave the way. Kyoko's not only a leader in Mount Lake Terrace, but well beyond our borders in Snohomish County and Washington State, serving on several boards, commissions, and committees. She's at numerous meetings and events each week representing Mount Lake Terrace and brings back information and opportunities for consideration. She has a strong network of business and legislative officials at the local, state, and federal levels. And although she's short in stature, she stands out with her iconic smile, stylish clothes, and red hair, and sometimes purple. <laughs> As a city staff member, I appreciated how Kyoko was thoughtful in bringing back swag from conferences for the employees and how she checked in during the pandemic while City Hall was closed and made a consistent effort to talk to city staff and bring in treats to raise morale. Kyoko was also a good listener in relaying concerns she heard from the community and making sure those were addressed with the city manager and council. Kyoko's kept in touch with me since I left in 2022, and I'm honored to be asked to speak about her dedication and inspiration. She was a woman of Japanese descent, a single mom, and she answered the call to volunteer and rose to the challenge of running for public office, eventually becoming mayor of her community. I hope her story will inspire others in Mount Lake Terrace and beyond. Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month is an opportunity to recognize and celebrate 
the contributions of all of our API residents and business owners. And I was fortunate to meet many who served on our boards and commissions, opened businesses, volunteered at or donated to city events, won Evergreen Awards, and supported the community in many ways. I wish you all the best, and I hope to see you in person tomorrow at Ken Court Match's retirement party. And as a postscript, I still think you're the best city council in the whole state. Thank you very much. I did not know about that. <laughs> the mayor from DEI. Okay. Are no there... one else has signed up to okay. speak, and we did not receive any comments in person uh, via writing. All right. Thank you. Wow. Um, <laughs> so next is the consent calendar. Mayor Pratan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Move to approve the consent calendar items A through F. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It's been, um, <laughs> I can't even think anymore. <laughs> okay, right. Adopted. <laughs> it's been adopted. Um, next is our uh, very, very special um, proclamation for Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month with our Deputy City Manager, Carolyn Hope. Are we going to... Scott Matsuda, our Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Commissioner, is going to read the proclamation tonight. Thank you, Scott. You're welcome. Mayor Matsumoto Wright, Mayor Pro Tem and Council, thank you very much. Is that on? Uh, will you, uh, Della Chen and, and Georgia Chen and Izzy Gunn, join me here? All right, this is the City of Mod Lake Terrace Proclamation. Uh, for Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Whereas the month of May was chosen as Asian Pacific American Heritage Month to commemorate the immigration of the first Japanese citizen, Nakahama Manjiro, to the United States on May 7, 1843, but also the anniversary of the May 10, 1869 uh, completion of the first transcontinental railroad built with the backbreaking labor of nearly 20,000 Chinese immigrants. And whereas, according to the United States Census Bureau, more than 11% of Mon Lake Terrace's population identifies as Asian American and Pacific Islander, including community members who serve as artists, business owners, uh, educators, healthcare professionals, lawyers and judges, clergy, first responders and military personnel, and whereas, while we celebrate the achievements and contributions of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders that enrich our history, society, and culture, we must also acknowledge that structural discrimination, prejudice, and injustice that still manifest in race, racist attacks on this community. And whereas today more than 20 million Asian American Pacific Islanders live in the United States, making America more vibrant, prosperous, and secure. And whereas the city recognizes that cultural organizations help carry on traditions to younger generations and the broader community to build understanding and foster relationships. Tonight, we recognize the Seattle Chinese Community Girls Drill Team which was founded by Ruby Chow in 1952 to accomplish those goals and is now led by Izzy Gan. In addition, we recognize local director Della Chen for her award-winning winning documentary about the drill team called She Marches in Chinatown. This month, the film be shown at the Motlick Terrace Library in uh, an effort to highlight these amazing women and girls and strength, uh, strengthen our community connections. Now, therefore, you, Mayor Matsumoto Wright, on behalf of the City Council, do hereby proclaim 
May 2024 as American Pacific Islander Heritage Month and encourage all residents to learn more about the positive contributions of American, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. Um, one for you. Oops, excuse me. Did you want to say something before you and left? Also, thank you to Kristen uh, Pifo and Ruth Griffin for, from the Mont Lake Terrace Library for partnering with us, the Mont Lake Terrace uh, DEI Commission, uh, uh, on uh, hosting the film. Thank you so much. This is uh, quite an honor. Um, we're just ex really excited to get this film out uh, to share this story with everybody because it is such an important part of Asian American history, which is part of American history. Um, our goal, my goal with this film is to get it into um, Washington State history, into curriculum. Uh, we designed this film to be 30 minutes so that it could be paired with a curriculum so that um, kids fifth grade, eighth grade, and high school can learn about um, Asian Americans, uh, history, and female-led Asian American uh, community efforts. So thank you so much for including us today. It's an honor. Um, this is Izzy Gon, who is the director of the, of the drill team. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you for honoring the drill team and for, I mean, it's very humbling and super excited for possibly coming up here to do a parade performance for the community. Um, but I've been doing this for 30 years and um, it's just a great um, honor. <laughs> it's hard for me to talk. <laughs> <laughs> and Della, thank you so much for doing this film because Without her film, I think that a lot of people would not have known the history of the drill team. So thank you. Yeah, hopefully you guys can all see it next Saturday at the Mount Lake Terrace Library. We're also screening at um, Shorewood High School on May 28th. So, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next proclamation, which is a proclamation for the National Police Week. Uh, did I just go ahead and, and have, uh, so Rick Ryan will be reading this and presenting it to the chief. This is our chief of police, Pete Call. Thank you, Mayor. I'm glad Chief Ka could be with us tonight. Thank you for being here and uh, being honored to read this proclamation. <clears throat> this is a proclamation for National Police Week. Whereas the Congress and President of the United States has designated May 9th through the 18th as National Police Week, which includes acknowledgement of police officers and canines who gave their lives in the line of duty or became disabled in the performance of duty. And whereas we are fortunate not to have lost any officers in the line of duty in our city, but across the state, we have lost 319 brave people who dedicated their lives to law enforcement. And whereas the members of the city of Montlake Terrace Police Department play an essential role in protecting the rights and freedoms of Montlake Terrace and provide a vital public service. And whereas <clears throat> it is important that all community members know and understand the duties, responsibilities, hazards, and sacrifices of their law enforcement agency 
and whereas members of our law enforcement agency recognize their duty to serve the people by safeguarding life and property, by protecting them against violence and disorder. And now, therefore, the mayor, Kyoko Matsumoto Wright, on behalf of the Montlake Terrace City Council, do hereby proclaim the week of May 9th through 18th, 2024, as National Police Week and encouraging community members to participate in local events honoring our police officers. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'll keep my comments short as I normally do. But speaking for the men and women that work in my police department, we really appreciate the recognition. And I'd like to point out, uh, there was a number thrown out here about officers that have given their lives. If you watch the news, there was four additional officers back in Carolina that were killed uh, this week. They were embedded in a uh, U.S. Marshals uh, Violent Offender Task Force. We have a like task force here that hits close to home because I have a detective embedded in a very similar situation. So uh, the, the, the possibility of that happening with those folks is always very high because of what they do. Just wanted to recognize that uh, another tragedy this week that uh, we just experienced. So thank you very much. Okay, so next is what half this room is here for. And that is the recognition of Kent Courtmatch. And we're gonna welcome Jeff Betts to the podium first. Well, good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem Council members. I'm Jeff Betts, the Recreation and Parks Director for the city. And I get the honor of recognizing one of our own. So I get to stand up here for staff and talk about somebody who works for the city. Well, as of tomorrow, it'll be his last day. We're talking about Ken Courtmount. She's the Parks and Property Management Superintendent for the last, well, the last, uh, I don't know, 15 years or so, but he's been with the city for 38 years. So just a few words uh, regarding Ken's service here with the city. So 38 years of public service. Started in 1986 as a groundskeeper on the golf course down there at Ballinger. So for the kids that didn't know, that was a golf course before it was a park. But 1989, Ken moved to a full-time parks maintenance position. And then about seven years later, became supervisor of the parks. And then in 2007 or so, he became a parks and property management superintendent, adding duties that he probably didn't have time to do at the time, but did not complain and just got things done. So Ken has many accomplishments, and I think most of us would recognize that he's kind of volunteer central for Malik Terrace. Anybody thinks of volunteerism, they think of Ken. And he took that role on with gusto. It's one of his favorite things to do is his own admission. We talked about the volunteer event uh, about a week ago, all the things that he's done and accomplished with volunteerism. So uh, along those same lines, special events, really 35 different tree lightings that he's attended. Every single Tour de Terrace event that the city has held, Ken's been at. Every single National Night Out event. So uh, a lot of evenings and weekends that he spent here in Mount Lake Terrace. So I don't know what you're going to do with all your time after this, but we really appreciate it. You know, And one of the big things Ken did also is he actually was a project manager on the Ballinger Park Master Plan about 10 years ago when we converted the golf course to a park and uh, went about getting public input on that project. And about the same time as when I became director. And so Ken really helped me, move me along, you know. And some of those areas that Ken's strong in, I wasn't so strong in. So he really helped me personally and, and professionally kind of bring me along in those areas. So if you talk to other city staff, what would they say about Ken? You know, Ken is helpful to everybody. He really is. So uh, he has his hands in every department. So one way or another through parks and property management and even steps out of those roles at times doing things that isn't necessarily in his, uh, potentially within his job description, but it's in within his wheelhouse as an expert PowerPoint maker. So you will see that if you come tomorrow, you've got a PowerPoint and also all the breakfasts that we've been to. Ken does those PowerPoints every year. So we've been watching those. 
So not only is he skilled but, um, and helpful, but just in general, he's a, he's a kind person. He's kind, he's affable. You ask him to do something, and he has a good attitude about it. Couldn't ask for anything more as a supervisor, really. It's just somebody that really wants to go out and get things done, is courteous to the public and, and his coworkers. I don't know anybody that said a bad word about Ken. So just a, a really nice person. So, and I think I would just say that, you know, in general, it's just a servant leader. Really, Ken is the embodiment of a servant leader and a government servant leader. So, uh, he's so busy, he actually had to split his position into two different positions. So, really appreciate, you know, all the years of service you've given to the city. And I'll keep this short and end it now. Uh, but tomorrow, we'll be able to uh, recognize him a little bit here as well. And then uh, afterwards, tomorrow evening, and that'll be the last day for Ken. Ken, did you want to come up and say something here? You want to bring the family up too? <laughs> oh, a certificate for you. Oh, okay, that's right. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Council, and City Manager. That is how I've addressed the council since I became a supervisor 28 years ago. It's the last time I'll say it, and it's the last time you'll hear it. Um, but it's a good thing. Uh, change is good. I'm ready to go. <laughs> um, moving people from the city to the other city hall and then from the city hall back to this kind of, that's enough. <laughs> um, but I have thoroughly enjoyed my time working for the, for the city of Mount Lake Terrace, the council, the staff, the community overall, um, have welcomed me, um, and made me part of the community. And, uh, I don't know. Uh, what else really more to say? Um, but as I look at some of these folks out here, I know almost everybody that's here. Um, and I've met uh, most of the people that are probably wa are watching, their staff. And there is uh, people on the community that we're watching. If you can make it tomorrow, it'd be wonderful to see you all. It's going to be a big family reunion. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Council. Thank you, City Manager. And thanks, Jeff. Well, I just wanted to confirm it's two to four tomorrow. Two to four tomorrow, yes. And whoever, I'll start or doesn't matter. Do you want me to start? Okay. So bear with me here if I can read my own writing. Um, Ken, I've had the pleasure of working with you for over 24 years, um, and I admire and respect um, how you've been a part of our park services and property manager superintendent. You have overseen our most precious and cherished part of our city. You have uplifted our city's image 
it is an extremely emotional day because you're retiring. Um, your years of service to the city of Mount Lake Tariff have truly benefited our city. Um, your career is something to be proud of. It has been a significant journey. Over the course, over the course you have um, dedicated your career has been, there has been many career achievements. I'll get through this, sorry, <laughs> I'm choking up here. Um, and some of those uh, career achievements are, and just to name just a couple, um, the new acquisition to expand Terrace Park Creek, the off-leash dog park, many, 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 many park cleanups, overseeing Eagle Scouts and Girl Scout projects, Ballin Ballinger Park, Uvesa Park, um, removal of um, lily pads, I think we did one year, you, or you did, um, new playground equipment, as we saw last week over at um, uh, Mount Lake Terrace, um, yeah, Forest Ridge, thank you. Um, and I was just thinking when you said that we got the equipment on sale, I, it was a proud moment, you know, and, and that was very nice of you to do that. But over the years, you've seen a lot of the equipment come and go and, and wear out. And I was looking at our, all our parks, and you've been instrumental in all of those. And one of my favorite parks that I go to a couple times a week is um, Bicentennial Park. And so you saw the demolition of the cabin and created the whole um, trail around the park and the removal of the fire engine and then putting the playground equipment back. And then also fire station park next to Briar. You saw the removal of the station and then uh, redoing that park. And along with Earth Day, new trails, redesign of Bicentennial Park that I just mentioned. And of course, Ballinger Park, we can't go without saying, and I know um, Jeff already mentioned a lot of that, but the projects to help the ecosystem restoration, the design of Ballinger Park and dealing with the flooding there and at the dam, and then the Playground USA Award that we received, thanks to you, um, and then all the support, especially to the park and a rec board over the years. It's been instrumental. And then just Jeff brought up one of my favorite things that you've done for the city over all these years is the um, photo montage but the music that goes with it, you could just feel it in your heart. Every time you attended one of those employee breakfasts, it just kind of bonded us all closer together. And I thank you for that. So just in closing, I'm wishing you nothing but the best in your retirement with your wife and your daughter. And I remember meeting your daughter when she was like this big. <laughs> and I still have a picture of you with your long, dark hair. And congratulations on your amazing career. Thanks, Ken. Thank you, Mayor, uh, and thank you, Councilmember Sonmore, for for giving us such a good overview and makes makes my it clears up space in my brain. So I appreciate that very much. Ken, um, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Oh, there it goes. It's back. Okay. On. Oh, we're back. All right. <laughs> the universe is going to let me speak. All right. Um, Ken, thank you. So I started off my um, service to the city uh, on the, the NPIS, so our Neighborhood Parks Improvement Subcommittee, where Ken was our, our fearless uh, city connection. Um, and he is just such an incredible um I guess entry point for folks into the city like your the the way that you care about the work that you do in our community and that you welcome people in um, and help to acquaint them and orient them with you know our community and the work that we do um, and I think just the, the 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 way that you approach it um, you know it, it helps to bring people in and feel help them to feel connected to our community and you absolutely did that for me. Um, and I am just incredibly grateful for the time that I got to to spend with you there, um, as well as all of the work that you have done and all of the impact that you have made to so many other folks in our community. Um, I think I'll leave it there, but um, I appreciate you very much. Uh, I will forever miss park tours because I don't think anyone is capable of giving a park tour quite like Ken. He 
takes uh, you know folks on a, a tour of all of our parks and has he's just this incredible reservoir of n knowledge about our community and so um, we will miss that very much but I'm super excited for you and happy for you and your family um, and and all of the things that you're going to get to do now that you have some more time in your life so we hope you come back and visit um, you are absolutely a part of our community I hope you don't just feel like you are you you are a part of this community and you know, you've made an impact here, um, you know, that, that will go on. So thank you. Okay, Rory, you're next. Thank you, Mary. I think, Ken, a lot of things have been said, so I won't repeat them, but um, thank you. And I, I think I'd, I'd know far fewer people around town and, and here in the city family, if, if not for you and, and uh, all the volunteer events that that you've put on. I, I think you're one of the, the first city staff I, I met and I really appreciate you on a personal level for um, helping me understand the, the city and, and the, the work of the city. Um, and I uh, hope you have some, some happy trails and, and quality time with your family. All right, Rick. Thank you, Mayor. I have, uh, I'll be doing more speaking tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to keep it kind of short. Uh, when I moved in the city in 85, let's see, you started 89? 86, okay. Um, every time I did something, you were there. It was like, <laughs> I mean, I joined the garden club and then if, we wanted to complain to anyone, we'd complain to you. <laughs> yeah, say he knows. <laughs> uh, then later on, I got involved with the arts and the art shows. There was Ken. Volunteer in the park. Volunteers. There was Ken. And all those cleanups, and, uh, and I could go on and on and on. I, I've even driven by, and you're out there messing around with that fountain. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's everywhere. Anyway, thank you very much, and have a great retirement. Steve? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just really just want to take a moment to go on record with my genuine reaction uh, with Ken already knows it when I learned that Ken was retiring and I, I do want to racialize this as most as possible which is take in whatever you think of me whatever you know of me whatever you've heard of me mix it all together some of it's probably true some of it probably isn't uh, but just know that whatever your opinion is of me I, when I learned that Ken was retiring he happened to walk through the building at the same time and I got up and went and asked him to get off the phone and I think I freaked him out a little bit actually because he was sitting and I said I need you to stand up I think he thought I was gonna throw blows or something because I was definitely intense and I cried I, I don't think I can give a better depiction of a friendship than that I even went so far as to tell him I, and I'm telling you all now on public record that my understanding of the city is that council and staff can't actually be friends but if that wasn't in place, he is my definition of a friend and someone that I would have wanted to call an actual friend. Uh, so your retirement to me is actually an opportunity, even though it's a huge loss to this city. Uh, but selfishly speaking, as a resident of 20 years, thank you for all you have done. My kids have grown up appreciating this city, not because of their parents, but because of what this city can offer. And to know that a lot of this, as you've been hearing, ties back to you is why those tears were there. So. Thank you for your work. Thank you for loaning us your husband and father. I can only imagine how many hours he took away from you all to dedicate to this city, but I hope you all receive that back tomorrow if you haven't been receiving it all along. So with that, thank you for your service, sir. Smokey Bear salutes you. <laughs> Did you want to go, Ryan? Okay. There it is. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Ken, what are we gonna do without you? You know, uh, this is actually my 25th year of serving the city. And it started, of course, as you know, on the Planning Commission. Um, so when I stepped into this role on the City Council, um, 
you know, I had a lot of a lot of great background on a lot of different things in a lot of different areas, and had felt very comfortable stepping into the city council. Um, but I didn't have as much background on parks and recreation. Uh, although I know that we, you, you came and gave presentations with uh, with Don and now and then Jeff to the, the planning commission, and gave us a good a good handle on parks and recreation. But I always felt comfortable knowing both you know with Don's leadership, now Jeff's leadership, and your involvement, uh, knowing that the, the, our parks and recreation programs were in good hands and safe and comfortable and and a place that we can we as our community can be proud of, and you've made that happen over you know, and given us confidence that, it, that we have a great program and will have continued to have a great program here at Mount Lake Terrace. It's been good hands. Um, and you've single-handedly kept it together and from falling apart. I honestly don't think the two positions are gonna fill your role. I know how much time and effort and energy and everything, dedication you've given and put into this city and it is deeply appreciated on behalf of the council, staff, the community, uh, everybody that's made this a place to call home and, and, and for that matter, <laughs> being a, being, coming from Shoreline and growing up in Shoreline and using the Malik Terrace Pool and Recreation Pavilion uh, can say that the entire region appreciates what you've done uh, over the years for 38 years now. And I, I don't know why you didn't want to make it just another couple of years, make it 40. And just in case you do want to feel like coming, if you let them come back, <laughs> you are always welcome here in Malik Terrace. Uh, in any capacity, we appreciate everything you've done to build us up to, uh, to be what we are. And, and a very proud uh, part of our community is our Parks and Recreation Program, and you've made that happen. Thank you. All right. I'm making mine really, really short because tomorrow is two hours of things. But um, I f first met Ken when my son was going to do a Eagle Scout project. And I kept telling my son, we should do something in Mount Lake Terrace. But he, he went to Camp Cucamonga, so he wanted to do something in Lindell Park. And I thought, no, let's do something in Mount Lake Terrace. So we... Um, Somehow, we met with Ken, and you had a whole stack of projects <laughs> in line. And so uh, we ended up at Terrace Creek Park. But um, I, I can't believe that years later, we're working together in, in different ways and so forth and really got to know each other. So I'm really glad. And, um, you know, this, this is not a very big city, uh, but you don't get to meet everybody. And I don't, you don't usually get to meet uh, staff people. Um, unless you have to, but I'm so glad um, that I, you know, have met and know Ken, and I just don't know what we're going to do with that pavilion without Ken. <laughs> so, anyways, we're going to build a new one. <laughs> so, um, we, we don't want to make this to the point where Ken is just going to say, well, I'm, you know, I can't leave, because, <laughs> because you're going to leave. Uh, you're going to retire. But anyways, you, you know that, that you're very, very much loved. So, And you're going to probably hear it 10 times more tomorrow, 100 times more. All right, anyone else before we, um, we move on to the next subject? Um, we, have, we have people in the audience. Do we want, are you all going to be by, by again tomorrow? <laughs> okay. We're not going to spend any more time tonight then. Okay, so we're, we're going to move on. We're going to move on to the public hearing and the vote on the ordinance amending property annexation and zoning map.
Hello, good evening, everyone. My name is Sarah Pizzo. I'm an associate planner here at Mount Lake Terrace. And today I'll be going over the proposed annexation for 4713 240th Street Southwest. The purpose of um, this agenda item tonight is to uh, go over the annexation and zoning ordinance and to hold the public hearing uh, related to the annexation of this property to provide planning commission's recommendation, the results of the boundary review board, and uh, council will have an opportunity to vote on the uh, proposed ordinances. So I'll start with some background information, quickly review the annexation process, provide the planning commission recommendation, boundary review board, provide some analysis, a staff recommendation, and next steps. All right, so the property in question is located just north of 240th Street Southwest and east of 48th Avenue West. It is currently an unincorporated property in Snohomish County, and it is 0.43 acres. The reason the property owners would like to annex into the city is to receive city sewer services. On February 8th, the council reached an agreement with the property owners to provide sewer services. Uh, with the condition of annexing within six months. And on the right is a image of a survey uh, done of the property um, and the annexation area proposed. So the annexation process was, was initiated by the property owners and involved city council, Snohomish County, the planning commission, and um, is now before you all for a vote and a public hearing. I do want to make a note on resolutions 870 and 889. These were approved uh, earlier on in the annexation process, but had incorrect acreage. Um, and so they have been updated and are in your materials for signature, signatures um, to show the 0.43 acres. So Planning Commission's recommendation for the zoning of this property is RS8400. Uh, reasons for that are because the, um, first of all, the comprehensive plan designates this property as urban uh, low residential. And so um, the zoning that is associated with that designation is uh, one of the single household residential zones. Um, and because this lot meets and well exceeds the minimum lot area for RS 8400, uh, which is 8,400 square feet. Um, this was the most appropriate um, zoning designation and it is surrounded by similar zones. Um, and so staff made that recommendation to planning commission and planning commission recommends um, that to council. And this is an image of our zoning map with a call out box showing uh, the property closer up with that proposed zoning designation. Right on March 20th, the Boundary Review Board at their meeting waived the review of the annexation, which is something they can do for annexation areas that are less than 10 acres in size and less than $2, many, $2 million in assessed valuation. And there's a county, uh, Snohomish County logo on the left side of this slide. All right, some analysis. So the comprehensive plan states that uh, su city sewer and water cannot be provided to unincorporated areas unless there's a no protest agreement. This property uh, and annexation area is within the city's municipal urban growth area and is designated as an area of potential annexation in the comprehensive plan. Planning Commission recommends the zoning designation of RS 8400. The municipal code requires an annexation ordinance and a zoning ordinance uh, adopted separately. And a condition of that agreement from February 8th is that the property is annexed within six months. Uh, and we are within that time frame. So staff recommends the approval of the annexation and the zoning ordinances for 4713 240th Street Southwest following today's public hearing. And the next steps include voting on the ordinances, and then if approved, they're sent to the county, Office of Financial Management, and city departments. And we welcome the property owners into the city. 
And now we have time for discussion and questions. Did we uh, want to do questions before we open the public hearing? So uh, you can uh, move to open the public hearing, uh, have questions, hear any feedback uh, from the, uh, the community, and then close and, and make your decision. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Move to open the public hearing. Second. It's been moved and seconded to move, open the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Public hearing is now open. <clears throat> Do we have any <clears throat> excuse me, written comments submitted? <clears throat> We do not. <laughs> All right. No one has signed up. There's no comments. And there's no um, no one signed up Correct. Uh, here tonight. It, um, okay. And no one's pre-registered. And um, all right, council, do you have any questions? Oh, wow. <laughs> all right, then we'll move on to um, Mayor Pertam. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Move to close the public hearing. It's been moved and seconded to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Public hearing is now closed. <laughs> okay, so Mayor Pertam. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Move to adopt the ordinance to, am uh, I'm sorry, annex property located at 2713 240th Street Southwest and the associated zoning ordinance. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Um, we don't need to have a discussion, do we? Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. All right. <laughs> okay, then we're going to move on to the review and vote on the amendment number three to the Sound Transit Staffing Reimbursement Agreement with Jesse Hoffman. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and Council. Thank you for having me. Um, it's kind of hard to top what has gone on here this evening, but I am here to bring you money, so that's something. Okay. <laughs> All right, so um, what I have before you is Amendment 3 to the Sound Transit Permit and Project Review Reimbursement Agreement. The original Permit and Project Review Reimbursement Agreement had a not-to-exceed amount of $903,586. What this does is it pays for services that we utilize in order to um, <clears throat> handle the development of the train station, uh, the light rail train station and the trackway through Mount Lake Terrace. Uh, consultants, our own time, permitting fees. That's what amendment one of that agreement did was rolled all of those costs underneath the reimbursement agreement from Sound Transit. Um, there have been two amendments since that time and this is the third. The last amendment brought the not to exceed amount to 3,125,232. Amendment three to this agreement raises the not to exceed limit by $453,000 and $800,000, bringing the contract total to $3,579,032. There is an additional contingency as shown in exhibit A3 of this agreement in the amount of $45,380. We don't think that this will cover the full agreement. This was, uh, this was done in, in, um, in haste in order to get the agreement in place. We do believe there'll be another one. It looks like it'll project out to about August if our numbers are right. It, it kind of varies month to month. So the city's purchasing policy states that contracts over 75,000 must be approved by city council. We're recommending that if you ha um, would like to do so, the council votes in this meeting to approve the city manager to sign this. Let me get the exact wording right. We recommend the city council vote to authorize the city manager to approve amendment three to the permit and project review reimbursement agreement with Sound Transit. Okay. Can I answer any questions? Any questions before we... Hey, wow. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Move to authorize the city manager to execute amendment number three to the permit and project review reimbursement agreement with Sound Transit. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. 
Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. And, well, you're not next. We have Jeff Betts <laughs> next. Review, the next item on our agenda is a review and vote on resolutions <coughs> to accept the grant with WashDOT and Sound Transit for Veterans Memorial Park Trails Project. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and Council Members. I'm Donnell Dial, Parks Project Manager. Uh, tonight, we, we are bringing to you a review and vote on three individual resolutions um, so we can obligate funds to support the construction of the trails at Veterans Memorial Park. Uh, we have multiple funding sources supporting the construction phase. We have monies from Puget Sound Regional Council, Sound Transit, and the Federal uh, Highway Administration. Uh, we'll go through a little bit of background, talk about the location of the project, give a little project description, um, talk about grant funding, the schedule, and uh, the request of council tonight. Initially, uh, the Veterans Memorial Park property was purchased in uh, 1960 uh, and was slowly added on to become approximately 8.3 acres that it is today. Uh, it's a densely wooded area with a playground, um, a gazebo, and currently one paved pathway in the upper loop, um, but a lot of dirt trails and pathways through the woods as well. Um, the original master plan was developed in 1984. Since then, an update was uh, completed in 2021 with the development of the, light, the latest um, recreation and open space parks plan. Um, and that's what we're working off of today. Uh, the location is immediately south of this building. Um, you can access it actually through uh, one of the trails right next to the police station. Um, it's in the heart of the town center. Again, it's about 8.3 acres of dense woods um, and has some park amenities as well. Okay, so the parks, the project at Veterans Memorial Park. So um, as a part of a transit um, project, uh, we're improving the dirt trails, um, pathways connecting from 60th, 58th, the Civic Campus, and making connection down to the transit center. Um, we're gonna pave those pathways, make them accessible, um, and provide illumination as well, and do um, some minor frontage improvements on 58th and 234th intersection. So to talk about the funds that we have to support the project, one of the funds that we have is from Sound Transit. We have a funding award of 500,000 to dedicate towards our construction phase. Um, this is part of the system access fund that was awarded, um, I believe in 2021. Um, so this is one of the funds that we're looking to uh, seek uh, approval to accept the funds so that we can move forward with obligation. Uh, the second fund that we have supporting construction at VETS is from the Federal Highways Administration. These are known as demo funds or earmarks. Um, federal funding, an award of $2 million that is also going towards the construction phase. This fund is also supporting um, the pedestrian plaza that will be constructed at a future date out at 236 in Van Rye Boulevard. The third piece to the funding for Veterans Memorial Trail is from the Puget Sound Regional Council through the Transportation Alternatives Program. Um, we were awarded initially 117, or sorry, 1,117,000. Um, they recently added to that and uh, we are accepting an award of one 0.526725, uh, again, to support construction phase of the pedestrian access to the transit center, um, and we're looking to obligate this year. So this is a schedule breakdown. We are looking to obligate this month and, come and move straight into bid advertisement um, and construction here this summer. 
Tonight, staff is recommending that we review and vote to approve the attack or the three resolutions before you to accept uh, monies from Sound Transit, uh, the Puget Sound Regional Council, as well as the Federal Highways Administration to support construction at Veterans Memorial Park. And so with that, I'll take any questions. Do we have any questions? Amazing. Mayor Fratam. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Move to approve the resolution and authorize the city manager to execute the funding agreement in the form substantially similar to Exhibit A, attached here, in, here too, with Sound Transit to support construction of the Veterans Memorial Park Trails Project. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Now we move on to the next one, which is the review nope. and, oh, no, we don't. <laughs> Go ahead, Mayor Portan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Move to approve the resolution and authorize the city manager to execute the uh, transportation alternatives program funding agreement in a form substantially similar to Exhibit B, attached here too with WashDOT to support construction of the Veterans Memorial Park Trails Project. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? And that motion carries. One more. Mayor Pratam. Thank you, Madam Mayor. One more. Okay. Move to approve the resolution and authorize the city manager to execute a Federal Highway Administration funding agreement in form substantially similar to Exhibit B, here to attached with Bushdot to support construction of the Veterans Memorial Park Trails Project. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? And that motion carries. I am on a different page than you are. <laughs> We're good. Under Bill? No. Okay. Number five, I want that chart. I, that's where I am now. Under Memo? No. Oh. That's where I was. Okay. We're just doing a three fun. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the review and vote on contract with. I'm in the right place. Review to vote <clears throat> on contract with King County Directors Associations with and Musco Sports Lighting LLC for field lighting at Evergreen Playfield Number Five. Okay. And good evening again, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and Council Members. I'm Jeff Betts, Recreation and Parks Director. And we are here to, to review and vote on the contract for KCDA or King County Directors Association for that Musco Sports Lighting and Evergreen Playfield Number 5. The project goal is simple. It's to install LED lighting at the Evergreen Playfield Number 5 field, which is located just adjacent to the dog park and just north of the Recreation Pavilion at 5303 228th Street Southwest. It's also our furthest southeast field in the Evergreen Playfield Complex. So current lighting at Evergreen Playfield number five are metal halide fixtures from the mid-1990s. And they're the kind that uh, actually have ballast, and when they're going out, you know it. From a little ways away, you can hear that buzzing sound. That's the ballast that has gone. So LED light fixtures do not have ballast. So there's a uh, much less maintenance involved with this more modern um, LED fixture. So also major issues with the current system is the lift that we have to obtain and rent to actually get up and repair the current light systems, which is about $5,000 each time that we do it, not including time and materials for the electrician to repair whatever is wrong. Uh, additionally, uh, the scope of this project it's pretty straightforward. There's only one galvanized steel pole with the foundation that needs to be installed, and that would be in essentially what would be considered center field for that ball field, but closest to the Terrace uh, Park playground. So basically the midfield of the entire grass area, but in the, on the south side of that. So that's just to add additional lighting to the center field area of the field, which currently is underlit. 
So the other poles, existing poles, would just get new pole top assemblies, luminaire assemblies that are really energy efficient LED lights. We would also get remote lighting capability, which we do not have on that field. So it could be turned on or off from anywhere really in the world that there's internet connection. So the, this light system also has a 25 year maintenance guarantee. So 100% of all maintenance costs are covered by warranty. So anything that happens with a bulb or any wiring would be covered by that guarantee. So the King County Directors Association or KCDA, it's a purchasing cooperative that's utilized by many municipalities and school districts in the region. The city is currently a member and we did utilize this process for Evergreen Playfield number one's lighting. The advantages of purchasing through this cooperative include it's an already vetted contractor and it's also just the contract's been pre-bid. So that entire bid process has been done for the city in that fashion. So Musco Sports Lighting is one of the largest field lighting vendors in the world and the system is called Light Structure System Total Light Control. Uh, as mentioned, it can be controlled remotely. Um, there's really a ton of flexibility in what we can schedule. We can dim it, we can do 100% lighting, we can um, control one light versus all of them much more uh, flexible than the older systems. And the lighting costs will be reduced considerably as well. It's at least half 50% savings from the typical metal light halides. And then also the, the light spillage is dramatically different. When I say light spillage, it's just what you see when you're looking driving the freeway, you can see a field lit up from a ways away. Sometimes you can really tell when it's an older light system versus a newer one. The, the newer light systems can directionally control the light and keep it on the field of play and not spill that into the neighborhoods and kind of add to that, um, the issue that can happen with older systems. So the funding for this project includes a Washington State Recreation Conservation Office, Youth Athletic Facilities Grant for $350,000, or and essentially it'll be 50% of the project costs. So this is, looks like at this point, it is going to be cheaper than we estimated it to be because we're retrofitting existing poles. But it's estimated that grant would probably be reduced to around $206,000 just based on it can't exceed 50% of the project. The other 50% would be budgeted parks capital project funds. And the, these park capital project funds that are already in the budget and obtained we're specifically derived from street vacation fees that the council approved a few years ago. So it'd be definitely being put to very good use. The contract amount to be approved tonight with KCDA and Musco is $343,828. But just to highlight the total project cost to exceed that dollar amount, this uh, council action is just to approve the contract. But just to highlight that there will also be permit fees, preliminary site investigation, and of course, taxes and contingency, and that's estimated to be uh, around $412,000 for a total project cost all in. So staff recommendation for the project is for the city council to award the contract to Musco Sports Lighting LLC through the King County Director Association for $343,828. Do you have any questions? Are there any questions or comments? Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Move to award the contract to Musco Sports Lightning, uh, Lighting LLC to install LED sports field lighting at Evergreen Play Field number five. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so next is the review and vote on the proposal to modify ordinance for the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Commission with our, is it going to be Carolyn? Yes. Hope? All right, our Assistant Deputy, Deputy City Manager, Carolyn Hope. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Thanks for having me tonight. I would like to bring to you a proposal from the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Commission who are really anxious to fill their seventh seat, which has been vacant for the past year. And since we're in open recruitment, and we've been hearing from the council and the commissioners themselves about the need to engage with youth more. They are proposing that we actually update the ordinance, um, although it doesn't prohibit any age from joining the commission, they would like to dedicate a seat to a youth who is in high school and is a resident of Montlake Terrace. 
and to change the term for that one seat to be up to two years, seeing as high school students may not be um, living in town for as long as um, some of our adults. Um, so that's their proposal. We have a, a markup of the ordinance in your packet for you to look. And we, due to the timeliness of recruitment, which is going on right now, uh, the commission is asking for your vote on this this evening. All right. Mayor Pro Tem? Um, oh, we, oh, we have to ask questions. Anybody, do you have any comments or questions? Um, Council Member Woodard? Thank you, Mayor. I, I just need a couple more words, and I can't find a seventh adult because uh, I still would love to see a youth commission, so I don't want to see us accidentally spin this out. So can somebody just put some words around more than we just can't find a seventh adult? Then that's why we want this youth for this particular commission, especially if it doesn't change anything. I, I, mean, I just heard you say there's no age requirement, so dedicating a space to a youth wouldn't that actually exclude someone who's not a youth. So there is a exclusion move here. So I just want to make sure that, that it isn't just we can't get that seventh seat filled. Yeah, I, I don't think it's about not being able to fill the seat and I'm not sure, um, I, I wasn't here when you filled the seat last year, so I'm not exactly sure if there weren't enough candidates or not, but um, I'm sorry, I think another council member has something to add. Go ahead. Mayor, can I weigh in? Thank you. Um, no, the, so the, the commission ultimately decided not to fill the last vacant seat because they wanted, we didn't have enough applicants when we went through the process this last time. Um, they didn't want to just put somebody into that role who wasn't passionate about stepping into that role. And so they really thought that the work that they were going to do over the course of this last year in terms of the strategic planning process and working with the consultants that we had identified and budgeted for, um, that like they decided to intentionally wait. I don't think there is any concern from the commission's perspective nor from my perspective that we could fill that with an adult. And I think they very intentionally want to name that we don't have youth applying to our commissions because I don't think youth recognize or see themselves in them. And so they really wanted to intentionally call out the opportunity in a way that makes space uh, and continues to make space for that perspective to be represented, which is not currently represented on any of our commissions. So that was that was the goal behind that. Um, and I think they would be open to the idea of seeing how it goes this this time and, you know, learning from that and continuing to, you know, look at how we, we continue to build more inclusive commissions. Um, but they really wanted to, you know, they see a lot of value in hearing from our youth and Felt like if we said and dedicated the role to um, a young person, um, that we would then have to go out and make sure that we are reaching that audience and making space for them. Anyone else? Okay, Mayor Pratam. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move to adopt an ordinance that updates the language in the municipal code sections 2. 0.150.010 and 2.150.020A to reserve a seat on the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Commission for a high school student. Second. So it's been moved and seconded. <clears throat> Excuse me. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Okay, all right, so we can move on to the city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, members of council, a couple notes for you this evening. Uh, first, I did want to mention that we issued uh, or sent out uh, communications to the community this morning about the, or this afternoon, I think, about the construction activity on 66th, and uh, next week there'll be a shift and much of the intersection at 216th. Uh, in 66 will be closed uh, during that period of construction. Um, there are, I want to make sure I get this right here, only southbound travel and turns will be possible. North and eastbound travel will be blocked. So I just wanted to communicate that as much as we possibly can. Maybe ease a little bit of the frustration involved with that, uh, that construction activity. Um, let's see here. 
the Mount Lake Terrace history exhibit uh, that we put together for the Edmonds Historical Museum will be opening up later this month and that exhibit will be coming back to the Mount Lake Terrace Library in October uh, in advance of our 70th anniversary celebration. So we're looking forward to that. And I'm having trouble reading my writing. Um, oh, we did fill the uh, two positions, one for the code compliance uh, position that we have. So that uh, individual was selected from an internal group of candidates and started yesterday. And the new facility supervisor, one of the two positions that are taking over from Ken was also an internal promotion. I think that's important to highlight that uh, um, we build our staff capacity uh, that we have and encourage people to uh, take the next steps in their career. Um, also, and last, uh, well, second to last, the NPIS did donate a tree to Ken at his last meeting the other night, uh, and that tree will be placed right out uh, front here out of City Hall, and I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, for the boards and commission recruitment that we have ongoing right now, we have four open positions and five applications, but we usually don't get very many until right before the deadline. So the deadline's the end of this month. I'd like to encourage anybody that is interested in participating in the city to apply. And that's all I have. I'm happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions for the city manager? Um, Mayor Pro Tem Wall. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, in the spirit of informing the community, what opportunities there are to volunteer, can you list off the uh, commissions and boards and commissions that we're looking for volunteers for? I can't, but I can get you that information uh, and make sure I have it for you the next time we meet. And we can also uh, publicize that again on our social media channels and on our website. I mentioned the Planning Commission. Well, there. so the opportunities, and I don't know where the openings are, so yeah. there's only four, but we have a uh, Planning Commission, we have the Arts Commission, we have the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Commission, um, the LEF Board, uh, we have salary commission opportunities, which is something that comes up once every five years. Uh, and that looks at the compensation for members of council. Um, so, and RPAC. Yeah, uh, and RPAC, uh, along with NPIS, which is a subcommittee, but still. Anyone else? Okay. Oh, okay. All right. So now we're going to go on to the council liaison reports. Um, we can start over there with Councilmember Murray. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, luckily, I looked and saw how far back it's been since okay. we have talked about these. I'll try to be brief given that, um, but I don't think we've had uh, a meeting, uh, a regular meeting in a month. So uh, going back to early April, uh, on the 6th, we hosted here in our council chambers the 32nd District's Legislative Town Hall. We had uh, Representative Davis and Senator Solomon here. Um, and I had the opportunity to moderate uh, the conversation. We had, I mean, a full house um, and lots of questions for them. Um, and they did a good job trying to get to all of those. Um, so appreciated uh, not only to have space to host them, but how many folks from the community turned out. Um, the 11th, I had my city manager meeting. Um, and then we had our Children's Day reception uh, and, and meeting slash work session. And it was amazing to have so many young folks here in this space and just excited about all of the ways that we are engaging um, and, and taking into consideration the young people in our community and thank particularly our DEIC um, for, for all of their work in, in putting that together as well as our deputy city manager. Um, on the 16th, uh, we had the Veterans Park Upper Plateau design meeting here. Uh, it is awesome to see that continuing to come along. And again, appreciate all of staff's work, particularly in looking at community engagement. On the 17th, we had our DEI commission meeting. Um, you know, we just voted on one of the, I think, key takeaways from there. So I won't, I won't spend too much time on that, but they continue to do um, really, really good work um, and, and are plugging away with all of the, the items on their to-do list. Uh, on the 18th, I attended one of those things, uh, our DEI training here um, with city staff, which was awesome. It was nice to have that space over in the police station uh, in the training room uh, to host that. Uh, and I thought that the training was, was great. 
Uh, then we also had that afternoon the neighborhood uh, center, the Linwood Neighborhood Center groundbreaking, uh, which was a really amazing and inspirational, you know, opportunity to to envision, um, you know, the the forward progress that that um, project has made, as well as uh, what is to come. They took us on a, we got Rick, Rick Steves took us on a virtual tour of what we can envision uh, once the building is built, and it was very, very cool. Um, and then we headed up to Everett, or I headed up to Everett, to the Snohomish County Cities uh, meeting where we got together with uh, colleagues from cities around Snohomish County and got to learn all sorts of good stuff about budgets, or as good as budget stuff gets. Um, the 19th, it's been a lot. We've had a lot going on. Uh, the 19th, we had a ribbon cutting at Terrace Ridge uh, Park, which was super exciting. It's always nice to see, um, you know, new playground com um, equipment and, and other park amenities come into service. Um, and it was really, really neat. Uh, we had the opportunity to see a family who I knew come and show up as we were finishing up and their kids were playing on the, the playground. And I just, you know, again, I think they're, we are doing so many positive things and it's really neat to see that in action. Uh, the 20th was our Arbor Day cleanup. We had lots of folks here, again, making a difference and volunteering in our community. I then headed down to the Seattle Center and attended the International Children's Friendship Festival. Uh, that um, I had a chance to see one of our DEI commissioners down there who was really the driver of bringing uh, the Children's Day proclamation here. Um, and so had a chance to meet some of the organizers there who were interested um, in looking at opportunities for, for bringing the, the things that they do around the Children's International Friendship Festival uh, to places around the, the greater Seattle area. So um, had a good initial conversation there and then came back for our volunteer appreciation event and just really I'm grateful for all of the people in our community who show up. And I think it was really interesting. I think what I reflected on as we were sitting here and, and looking at all of the folks in the room was just we had volunteers who had been volunteering in this community for 30 years and, you know, beyond. Um, and we also had folks who, you know, have only moved to the community, you know, within the last year or two and have kind of jumped right in. And it was just neat to see, I think, so many different people in our community coming together to, to give back and make it a better place. Um, we had our work session on the 25th. We had our retreat on the 27th, which was amazing and a really good opportunity to connect. And I'll let other folks talk more about that. Um, you know, but I thought it was a good foundational kind of body of work as we move forward as a council and as a city together. Uh, the 30th, we had the Briar Terrace Chamber of Commerce um, here again in council chambers uh, to get an update on our economic development strategic plan got to hear lots of really interesting and good feedback from our business community about how both the Chamber of Commerce and we as a city can support them um, and, and their ideas for how we can continue to encourage economic uh, development and vibrancy in our community. Uh, and then the first, yesterday, I had a chance to City Club had their civic cocktail um, and they had a really great uh, representation for Snohomish County. They were talking about mental health as we kick off Mental Health Awareness Month. And we had uh, Representative Davis, our representative here in the 32nd District, was one of their panelists, uh, as was uh, this, um, the Chief Advancement Officer for Compass Health. Uh, we had Richard Taylor, who I think if folks have seen around, he is an Edmonds resident who gives really powerful, um, inspirational uh, keynote speeches and actually had a member of Volunteers of Western Washington uh, who, I think her name was Mia and she is part of um, the, she's part of the, the crisis care line specifically that has been built for uh, our Native community to be able to connect with other folks um, who, other Native folks who, who are there to support them if they are going through crisis. And so it was really, it was, really powerful. I saw that they posted it online today, would encourage folks to take the opportunity to watch it um, and to think about, you know, your own mental health, you know, the, the you know, how, how connection, I think, impacts one another and the things that we can do to support one another, um, because I think that is super important, and I, I thought they did a good job of naming that. So uh, I think that's all I have. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Um, Councilmember Ryan. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> I'll be short on uh, the long list we have going here. Um, 
on the 9th, I attended our uh, left one retirement board. This is in April. And then on the 10th, uh, we had a town hall with Senator Solomon and um, House Representative Davis at, in the evening. And the 11th, we had a work session with the Children's Day Proclamation and the Children's Choir. And the 16th, uh, I had Arts Commission meeting, and then I stopped by to look at the Parks and Recreation presentation in chambers here for uh, parks. And then on the 18th, I attended the Trinity Lutheran Linwood Neighborhood Center groundbreaking. And then that evening, we had the Snohomish County Cities and Towns networking meeting. And then on the 20th, Saturday was Arbor Day. I met with our uh, Arbor Day volunteer during their uh, thank you and lunch. And then that evening, well, afternoon, we had our volunteer appreciation here at City Hall. And then our retreat on the 27th. And thank you, everyone that worked so hard for that to make it come about. Thank you. All right. Councilmember Payne Donovan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, well, it'll be very redundant here. So I'm going to go in reverse order. Um, <laughs> Uh, last night, I, I also attended the, the Malik Terrace Briar uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, Strategic. Oh, okay. Uh, Malik Terrace Chamber of Commerce uh, uh, Strategic uh, Visioning uh, Workshop. Um, didn't get to stick around for all that, but, but was really pleased with the turnout. Um, uh, and uh, also attended uh, the AHA meeting, the uh, acronym I, I always uh, Alliance for mix up. Housing affordability. Oh, the Snohomish County Alliance for Housing Affordability meeting. Thank you. Um, and and quickly wanted to highlight uh, some of the the conversation there. I think the most um, important topic that was discussed um, with their staff, Chris Collier, who you know uh, works with with our staff and and our um, some of our commissions uh, quite closely. Um, relates to the potential for um, AHA and, and Chris helping the, the city of Mount Lake Terrace with um, with compliance work for um, affordable housing um, that that might be built um, with our our, um, our tax incentive program and um, while the while the AHA board didn't necessarily vote. Um, to um, to stand that program up at this meeting, there was uh, interest um, from from the the, the group, um, and especially those cities, um, you know, including Mount Lake Terrace, um, Edmonds, Linwood, Everett, and um, you know, potentially others will will be um, adding. Um, be adopting uh, some similar ordinances here in the future so just want to put that on our radar and um, also I also attended our, our council retreat last Saturday I really enjoyed the the chance to, to meet and um, discuss uh, the, the, the sort of year ahead with you all and and our, our leadership staff um, uh, prior to that I also attended the Arbor Day cleanup. Well, it went to our work session that week. Um, also enjoyed um, pulling pulling weeds, as it were, on our Arbor Day cleanup and the, the volunteer appreciation event that followed it. On the 18th, I, I also attended the Snohomish County Cities Dinner and the, the groundbreaking for the Linwood Neighborhood Center, which will be, um, I guess it's hard to sort of understate the importance of, of that building and the services that will be um, found there uh, for for all of, of those um, those of us who, who live here in southwest Snohomish County and um, I'll uh, I'll go as far back as I think uh, April 5th because I, I, I um, missed a, a meeting um, I was excused from a meeting in in April 
attended the uh, Ballinger Forum meeting with our um, stormwater czar, uh, Laura Reed, um, and really enjoyed the, the presentation uh, during that meeting from some fish scientists about sort of um, historic fish populations in um, in our greater watershed, that that is that you know the the streams, wetlands, lakes, um, rivers that feed into the the north part of Lake Washington and the the you know all of the historic sort of uh, sort of terraforming we've done in the colonial age and the impacts it's had on fish populations and and the the work that that will be, and the importance of the work that we do in um, you know, keeping our stormwater as cool as possible and as well as uh, removing the, the barriers um, to the, the free flow of, of water um, to Lake Washington and, and to the Puget Sound. Um, so all, all that to say, uh, um, you know, there, there, there were some more sort of um, bureaucratic elements to the meeting, but I think it's important for us as a the city and as a staff and community to um, think of of the opportunity um, as we remove fish barriers and um, restore habitat in our Lake Ballinger and and our creeks, but but also our you know think about our stormwater drains, um, all the nutrient and pollution that flows into those um, those. Uh, uh, you know, great on the street really um, do our, our environment a, a disservice if, if they aren't as clean as, as, as possible. So I um, was really pleased that the, that group had a chance to have that time with, with um, you know, local fish scientist who was at, who was based out of, um, I believe you to Bothell, not, not Cascadia, but, um, and I'll, I'll end my liaison report right there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Council Member Woodard. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I too was not present for the uh, April 4th meeting. So I haven't had to wear a suit or be behind this desk for a month. So that's my way of saying it. My report actually goes back into March. Uh, nobody panic. Uh, that said, I did the math, I have at least 18 items that I would report on, and I don't want to do my clerk like that, so I already emailed that to her. And just know that if I added in my work stuff, it would have shot up well over that. So I'm just gonna do a couple of highlights that I didn't already hear, but for the most part, if there was something in common between us, I was there with them. Uh, so the things that I did on my own, uh, dating back to March the 23rd, was uh, I had the opportunity to MC the first annual 5K for the food bank in Everett. I bring that up here just to say that it'd be interesting to see what we're doing down here for our food bank um, in terms of just raising funds for them. That's not a question I have asked in the past and wondered if that's something our city council can think about. So just putting that in motion as a something to think about. Um, only other piece I wanna add that ties back to Mount Lake Terrace that happened in March is I also had the opportunity to attend the Snohomish County Prayer Breakfast on the 29th. I bring that up because I had the honor of meeting Dr. Hammer's family, which most of us are going, who on earth is Dr. Hammer? Maybe folks over here know who that is, but that was one of our Mount Lake Terrace mayors. And I heard that there's a, a historical uh, display being created on Mount Lake Terrace and just know that you can learn about the Hammer family through that process because mm -hmm. his descendants, his family have contributed to that. But it was just awesome to be in that space and to meet part of our history. Uh, if I move into April really quickly and just give two highlights, I'll give them on the same day, uh, which is uh, on the 26th, the last Friday, I had the opportunity to, I think that was my third time, MC, co MC the uh, Leadership Snohomish County, who we invest in, uh, Leadership Snohomish County Economic Alliance folks. Uh, they're, um, wait a minute, is that right? Economic Alliance? No, not Economic Alliance, Leadership Snohomish County, separate entities. Uh, their uh, step-up conference, uh, racial equity conference. Uh, just an honor to do that. Uh, the last year we actually did it out of this site. Uh, this year we did it out of uh, CWU on the Edmonds College campus. Uh, but just a wonderful opportunity to highlight our campus, our city, and for those who were participating, I, I believe there were some DEI folks there. I believe some of you might have participated. 
uh, but just to say thank you for participating in that. And then the second, which happened on that same day, but actually took place over the course of three days, and I'll bring that up real quickly in new business when we get there, is we had a rampathon take place here, and I'll just hold that steady to say I'll bring that up in the next one, and I'll just end my report there. Thank you, Councilmember Sandmor. Thank you. I'll keep mine brief since you all did a very good job at the details. Um, attended left one where we reviewed the claims, Children's Day, but I just have to tell you a really quick story about Children's Day, and I just had a blast. Um, the children from Brighton um, are extremely bright and talented, and I was talking to one fourth grader, and she was telling me jokes, and I thought, you're a fourth grade? I said, you're a little comedian. I said, what do they call a comedian woman? She goes, a comedian hen. And I'm thinking this is a fourth grader. And she, they are very extremely bright. And then the, um, the young adults from Mount Lake Terrace High School are wonderful. And then the four thoughts of Briar Terrace, um, the two girls that attended that talked about um, recycling and uh, safe routes to school. I was very impressed with them. Um, and then attended the town meeting and the ribbon cutting where I appreciate where Ken saved us money. He got the $18,000 new equipment on sale. So that was a win. Normally it would cost about $24,000 um, with installation, but we did our own installation. So I appreciate that. Council retreat. Um, the finance board, um, we um, reviewed the expenditures. And one of the expenditures is the new logo on the podium. And so that looks very, very nice. And then Park and Rec, and we also have a Park and Rec Advisory Board um, member in the audience, Forrest. Um, Retta is here today, and I thank him for his service in the Park and Rec. Our last um, meeting, we talked about Veterans Memorial Park Upper Plateau, Letter of Support, Evergreen Playground um, Complex Plans, our 2024 Work Plan Review, uh, our tree board update, and then we had two disc golf players that came in and told us about some of the issues with the disc golf, and that will probably be coming to you later. And then last but not least, again, um, thank you, Ken Courtmatch, for all your service to the city of Mount Lake Terrace. And that's all I have to report. Thank you. Mayor Pertem Wall. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, yes, so going back to our work session on uh, April 11th, we had our celebrate our Children's Day and reviewed issues approved on uh, tonight's consent agenda. Some of those issues, I think, <laughs> it's going back a little ways. Um, I, I did want to highlight, uh, especially considering what we just changed on the um, DEI. I should have brought it uh, brought it up during Children's Day when we had some of our high school students there, and I'm going to start making it a mission of mine to raise the topic of the need to update our world history books which are severely out of date. So do not cover the world's history, but rather the Western hemisphere, West, Western, Western history mostly, and how it came to America. Um, but there is a great, big, amazing world out there with an amazing history that uh, I sure have a passion for and would love to see us spending a little more time teaching uh, how we got to where we are truly today in, in the world, in, in our country, and in, in this region. Um, I'll stop there for now, but you'll probably be hearing me raise that topic again and looking forward to working with our DEI and our new student uh, commissioner on that issue moving forward. Um, let's see, on the 16th, we had the Veterans Park uh, Upper Plateau uh, Open House. I also had on the 16th, the DEI training session. On the 18th, we had the Snohomish County Cities uh, uh, networking session and talked about budgets and financing, had a great uh, session with uh, with Mike Bailey. I thought one of the best sessions actually we've really had in a long time with the with Snohomish County Cities. Um, I was sorry to have missed, I'm sorry that you stepped out, but sorry to have missed the uh, uh, Linwood Neighborhood Center uh, groundbreaking because I was actually taking my mother uh, to the doctor then, so I was not available for that which I'm sure that it, the neighborhood center would agree that that was probably a higher priority. Um, but I do look forward to the grand opening uh, because I, as has been mentioned, I, we can't underscore the importance of the uh, neighborhood center and what it's gonna do for servicing uh, services for this community. I think a very important topic that I'll be raising at next week's uh, council president's meeting is how important it is for us to be working as a region together and coordinating with our services that we're delivering to our community because we can't do it on our own. Um, but this is a tremendous 
uh, program that has been put in place that uh, really look forward to emulating in a lot of other ways and working together to be able to help serve the South County region, um, whether it's uh, mental health services, other social services, um, dealing with homelessness, uh, affordable housing issues, uh, climate issues. There's just a lot of opportunity, I think, for us to be working together as a region and addressing a lot of these through through working together with other governments as well as, uh, as uh, service providers uh, to help serve our community. Steve, I'm sorry you missed that. I was just mentioning that. I'm sorry I missed it. Linwood Services uh, Neighborhood uh, Center's grand oh, oh, groundbreaking session, but look forward to the uh, because of my uh, taking my mother to the doctor, so I was not available. But I think it is a tremendous uh, program. Looking forward to celebrating the grand opening. Uh, so moving on to uh, the 24th, had a Somosh County tomorrow steering committee meeting where we had a briefing on inclusionary zoning um, and uh, how Snohomish County is targeting is incorporating that in and targeting it into uh, municipal urban core areas. Uh, in the uh, next update, there's a lot of discussion about pros and cons, um, and looking forward to a lot of a lot of us are anxiously awaiting how that turns out because there are some concerns. There's again, there's a lot of pros and cons to inclusionary zoning, and so if they do uh, adopt that in Snohomish County, I think a lot of us will be watching that for results and see how that plays out. Um, Hasco also gave a review of uh, programs available to help affordable housing needs in our community and I really did a great job talking about the number of different areas where we all can be utilizing their services and our, our residents can be utilizing their services for uh, things like rebate programs for, for rent and, and whatnot. There's just again a lot of services that Hasco has available to help with affordable housing issues. Um, there are also a number of concerns voiced about uh, from several city cities about meeting their growth targets. And so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out over the next uh, few years, really, because uh, particularly right now in, in adopting our and updating our comprehensive plans, there seems to be a lot of pushback from our neighbors about um, about having to adopt more housing in their communities. And so we can certainly appreciate that concern, but the challenge is, of course, uh, how do we how do we address our, our housing needs and, and growing population in this area? Um, Without any anyway, it's just it's, 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 it is it is it is a challenge. There is a concern. Um, I think we should be proud of what we're doing here in Mount Lake Terrace uh, to address those challenges head on. Um, and it, it'll be interesting to see what our neighbors end up doing as they go forward in in addressing the uh, growth targets uh, coming up and and what kind of pushback they they do as far as uh, even talking about wanting to move the line. So. Interesting. Uh, all right, so then uh, on the 25th had the uh, Puget Sound Regional Council Operations Committee and uh, talked about uh, budget and recommended the budget for that we'll be seeing at the General Assembly on May 30th. Uh, on the 25th, uh, also on the 25th, had the Puget Sound Regional Council Executive Board meeting to talk about some of our budget. Again, that we'll be um, adopting on the uh, uh, General Assembly on May 30th. Also had uh, talked about the Climate Commitment Act and uh, had a briefing on that. Federal legislative update, a general, again, the General Assembly from 10 to 1 on May 30th. Um, and applications are open, just one more reminder for applications are open for Summer Planning Academy for high school students interested in planning. Uh, the deadline is May 15th. So if any high school students out there are interested in planning uh, and how cities become what we, what we are today and where we're going in the future, um, this is a great opportunity for you. I encourage you to apply for that by May 15th. On the 25th, we had our uh, work se session and reviewed issues again that we approved on tonight's consent agenda. Uh, met with the economic, our economic development consultants on May 30th, followed by the meeting with the Mount Lake Terrace Chamber of Commerce, uh, that where we reviewed with our consultants the Mount Lake Terrace economic development strategy and got the feedback from our, our businesses in our community, which, which was a great opportunity to hear and listen to them and what their thoughts and ideas are for moving forward. On the 1st of May, had the Snohomish County Tomorrow's Executive Committee meeting where we talked about uh, our operations and programs and uh, uh, um, topics for the next uh, next meeting and also the uh, updated budget. We're going to be having to increase the budget, of course, as usual, uh, to address the Snohomish County Tomorrow needs. Um, so that'll be coming before us again at the, well, at the steering committee in at the Mm, let's see, that'll be the May meeting and then official adoption uh, in the summer. 
and then also talked about uh, see so for your calendars the the our annual assembly for the Snohomish County tomorrow is going to be December 11th so um, around 6 p.m. and probably in the Everett area we'll be having the general assembly for Snohomish County tomorrow then yesterday I had the I chaired the vision awards committee for um, that was yesterday, right? Yeah, for, so Puget Sound Regional Council's Vision Awards, uh, 2050 Vision Awards uh, Committee, and we had three different categories, uh, planning ahead, on the ground, and working together. Had uh, some really great applications. I've already shared uh, some of them with the city manager of, of other communities and some of the great programs that they've got going on, including our own Sound uh, Linwood next door with a great uh, affordable housing project that they're doing. And, uh, uh, um, uh, so Community Transit has a great program. I was really excited to see them uh, uh, put in there for, for planning ahead and for the uh, ZIP program that they've got. Um, so just there are, again, a lot of nominations, a lot of great uh, programs out there that uh, look forward to sharing with uh, the entire region and encourage the region to be uh, looking at, at some of the examples that we have throughout the region and uh, look forward to emulating in, in, in other areas around the Puget Sound region. Um, with that, I guess uh, we had our meeting with the mayor and city manager and I uh, earlier today, and I think that concludes my report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You won one of those vision awards from PSRC some time ago. Um, you said you met with the, our economic development companies? Consultants. So um, what does that entail? Because I guess Maybe I don't even know about that. But those are the consultants. Remember back in February, they came and presented to us on the council and they were available um, on Tuesday for us to, oh, any of, oh, any of us to meet with I you were like on a committee or. Yeah, no, no, oh, this, okay. is, yeah, this, is, this is our consultants that we're contracting with that, oh. that we've heard from. And yeah, no, they were just out in, in the area uh, talking with us. I gave it, we had all had an opportunity to, to talk with them individually uh, as well as um, meet, uh, uh, they were also, that's, those same consultants were the ones that gave the presentation to the Mallet Terrace Chamber of Commerce later that uh, evening. Got it. Yep. Okay. So it's my turn. And I'm going to go back to um, April 5th. Um, I attended the Seashore Transportation Forum, and that was an in-person meeting, the first in-person meeting that we had since the pandemic. Um, and it was great. It was really, you know, uh, nice to see a lot of the people in person. On the 9th of uh, April, I attended by Zoom uh, the Snow 911. We every two years we vote for our reps, and so every two years I sign on and vote. And so I was there for that. And on uh, the 10th, the Herald wanted to do a story about. Mount Lake Terrace and do a walking tour. So the city manager and I uh, took a walk with them and the article that they put out was really a great article um, about our um, vision and everything for town center. And that evening I attended the 32nd district um, legislative district town hall with uh, Senator Solomon and Representative Davis. On the 17th, I um, um, attended the Mount Lake Terrace DEI training uh, and I am really, really um, proud that our city is, is doing this because not all the cities are doing it and some cities don't even think there's a need. Um, so I'm really proud of our city. On the 18th, I attended the ribbon cutting for uh, or the groundbreaking uh, for the Linwood Neighborhood Center and um, cannot wait for that to open. And then that, uh, right after that, we all went to the Snohomish County Citizen Towns, which had the speaker on budget, which I thought would be the most boring speech in the world. And it turned out to be fantastic. He made the budget seem understandable and funny sometimes, and just, um, I stayed awake. Um, and then... Uh, on the 19th, I attended the ribbon cutting for the Terrace Creek Park, which others have already talked about, and the Mount Lake Terrace uh, on the 20th, that Saturday, the volunteer appreciation, um, which uh, others have all talked about too. 
And then on the 22nd, I attended the Snohomish County Mayor's meeting, and that is on Zoom because um, it's all Snohomish County. And um, we get uh, about half the cities attending, and uh, we just share great ideas on that one. On the 24th, I attended the Edmonds School District Student Leadership um, Conference over at the Edmonds um, Center for Arts. Um, they wanted to um, have speakers from the three cities. So I was the only one from Mount Lake Terrace, but there were two from Edmonds and one from Linwood um, talking about leadership in, um, in the cities. And there are a lot of uh, students. It was all breakout sessions, but boy, there were a lot of students. And I, when, when you go to something like that, you just really have faith in the future because they're smart. Those students are, are smart and they're our future. Um, and then on the 27th, I also attended the Council, council Retreat and on the 29th, um, I attended the Conservation Futures meeting. And, pardon? Forgot to mention the Which, retreat. <laughs> oh, you forgot to mention the. Yeah, well, you were there. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Conservation Futures uh, is is uh, a um, well, you collect the money on your property taxes, and then um, the, the county buys open um, open space. And, um, and so forth. And they were thinking about, we spent a lot of money giving money out and um, we, we are now, you know, don't have a, as much anymore. Uh, and so they were considering skipping a year and I didn't want to skip a year. <laughs> so, so the small projects can probably get funded this time. Um, so hopefully we'll get some in. I hope you're listening, Mr. Betts. Um, and then on the 30th, um, I also attended the, the Mount, Lake Mount Lake Terrace Chamber here at Mount Lake Terrace uh, City Hall. Um, and it was very interesting to hear the needs and wants of our business community. Um, so it was an eye opener and I really, really um, hope that we reach out to other people again. And then yesterday I attended the S South Snohomish County mayors. There's only eight of us. Uh, and so five of us met at Diamond Knot because it was hosted by um, the whole city this time was Mount Lake Terrace. And um, when, when you have five mayors talking and then we're all right next door to each other. It was Edmonds, Linwood, Mount Lake Terrace, and Briar, and Mill Creek. Um, the subject matter is, there's just a lot of, um, lot of things going on, and we just get along so well. And we just, um, we share ideas, we um, answer questions, and, and so forth. And we all have the same problems, too. It's not just one city having problems. Um, and, <laughs> and then um, this afternoon, I attended the community transit meeting, uh, board meeting, and we saw the, it's not called zip cars um, in Darrington, Arlington, and Lake Stevens, but that's the next uh, group of cities that are getting um, that service. And it's it's going to just it's just going to make everything so much easier for those cities, and I just can't. And then the Lake Stevens map, it's all around the lake, and that's bigger than the city of Mount Lake Terrace. So I'm thinking, wow, if you can do all of Lake Stevens, you can do all of Mount Lake Terrace next when we you when you start getting it south of uh, Linwood. And that's the end of my report. Okay. That was a long one because it was a, over a month for a lot of us. Yes. <laughs> and we had a lot of meetings to go to. All right, so next is new business. Does anyone have anything for new business? <laughs> Council Member Woodard. That was sexy, excuse me. Um, so first let me apologize. You were by yourself. I have it on good authority that your 
seatmate backed out at the last minute because he had work uh, for the youth. So I'm glad you were there for the, the youth event that you were just talking about. You said you were the only one from Lake Terrace there. I was like, yeah, because it's your seatmate left you hanging. That's why oh. I got called I into the office. Was, was yeah, invited. I got called into the office. All good. Uh, switching gears, new business, uh, technically business that's already happened. I referenced it in my very truncated uh, report of what I've been doing. And I want to pause and just say congratulations to the Balzarini family. Uh, residents of Mount Lake Terrace, they're down at the uh, Young, Mobile, Young Mobile Home Park, mm -hmm. uh, just down the street from us. Uh, I'm going to quote Joyce specifically. You have given us our life back. Now, what did she lose in that process to get it back? That is our way of saying thank you to Master Builders Association of King and Snohomish Counties. They have what's called a rampathon. Uh, if you listen to our retreat, you heard a little bit about that, but I'm going to presume you didn't. So just share just a little bit about them, which is basically they look for families that are in need. And in this particular case, it was around mobility. So what they ended up doing was creating a, a brand new ramp so that uh, the Balzarini family can leave their home. Uh, without going too deep into their life, just know that they have been housebound for well over four to five months. Uh, just literally not being able to leave because of four steps, four steps, everybody, count them, one, two, three, four, kept you in your home for pretty much almost half a year. Uh, from Mo uh, Master Builders Association of King and Snohomish Counties, they specifically worked with Exalt Services, a great organization, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, and then they had volunteers from Capital Benefit Services and Sound Capital Loans who came in and really fleshed it out, uh, which is just to say they did this, believe it or not, in basically 48 hours. Uh, they would have been completely done, but of course we live in uh, underneath the convergent zone, which is to say if any time you're dealing with concrete, there's weather permitting, and so there's a little bit that they still needed to get done. Uh, but if you get a chance to go and visit, it's an absolute worth your time. And we, again, just wanted to make sure that we paused and said thank you for choosing one of our Mount Lake Terrace residents. Uh, and giving them their family back. And the one story I will share is that it's bigger than just this family. Uh, they're just awesome people. They're givers. Uh, they've been dedicating their lives to service. Uh, but there was a hidden piece of this story that came out in talking with them, which I shared with the council back on Saturday, uh, which is it wasn't just these, the two that were impacted. Their family was impacted. They have a 95-year-old grandfather that they had been taking care of that she hadn't been able to go see. Uh, so... Just even in that act, you're making a much bigger impact than just that ramp. Um, but I'm glad they have signage out. And the real takeaway here is Joyce, who's the reason they did this, uh, her plan after her hip surgeries is to get well enough to actually give back and donate and help someone else get their ramp, which if you know ever needed a sign of true giving, there it is right there. Grateful for what she has. Her new motivation is to get better so that she can help give somebody else that same level of freedom. A uh, wonderful program, Ramp-a-thon. If you can't understand me, that's on you. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, Master Builders Association of King and Snohomish Counties, thank you all for such a wonderful program and again for choosing a Mount Lake Terrace resident. Council Member Payne Donovan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, first, quickly, in, in um, the... Uh, in in news related to um, those community members here in Mount Lake Terrace and, and in our neighboring cities, um, there is a, a forum being organized um, by or in Linwood that will relate to um, manufactured home, mobile home um, park uh, uh, residents. You know, these folks own their own homes, but not the land underneath them. And thankfully, our, our city has avoided the, the scourge of, um, of uh, you know, uh, entities, business entities coming in and buying uh, property um, where these mobile homes sit and uh, making that, that land rent unaffordable. Um, Linwood. Um, and many of our, our neighboring municipalities have many mobile home parks and they represent true 
affordable housing for for those uh, communities, and um, there's the real risk of displacement. I think I, I uh, think you all saw at our um, legislative town hall some of those folks who, who came out here. Um, anyway, just want to say that um, there will be a, a forum held in Linwood, Linwood on May 30th, at, hosted at Homage, and um, there will be state representatives and, and um, other folks there to have a, a panel discussion about how to protect um, you know, uh, mobile home park um, residents um, that I, I think will be an important uh, event. Um, wanted to get on your radar. And then um, secondly, you know, we've been talking about sort of regional approaches and, you know, at our retreat we, we particularly spent some time with Chief Ka discussing um, you know, the, the likely loss of one of, of our um, embedded social worker, um, had a chance to talk to other um, city council members around the South Snohomish County region. I think there, there is a real um, need and opportunity to uh, figure out what a, um, what a, I'm referring to my notes, what a, a regional crisis response agency might look like. There are models in King County that the county puts money into down there and, and other opportunities um, to really um, you know, use our, our resources collectively to uh, respond to those in, in crisis um, and, and, and also hopefully um, you know, retain the services of, of our embedded um, social workers um, who might be out of a job if, if that uh, compass um, dynamic or that, that reduction in force at, at compass uh, continues to impact our ability to uh, provide um, uh, social work to, to those in need, those in crisis here, here in Malik Terrace and our uh, neighboring city. So just want to plug that for, for us as we engage in the region and, and for staff um, where the opportunity uh, presents itself. Mayor Pro Tem Wall. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, and I kind of touched on it during my report, but I, uh, we have our council president's meeting on next Tuesday with uh, um, South County uh, folks, and I'm going to be raising that topic and starting the, starting the discussion amongst us about an official body to start reviewing possibilities and opportunities for us working together uh, to address that and many other needs here in the here in the region. Thank you. So for um, mobile home parks, uh, ours are zoned mobile home parks and can't be sold to anybody unless they come to us for a comp change, uh, zoning change. But they can, the new owners can up that uh, cost of um, space rent. Uh, to the to the point where it sometimes becomes unaffordable. The other thing that can be done is to condominiumize each lot so that the people who own the mobile home will then own the land underneath it. Um, and Haskell tried to do that with one, but it didn't it didn't work out because you have to have the buy-in on everybody. And, and you have to have the finances and, and so forth. So, but it is a way. And so um, I haven't heard a lot of people talking about that other, other part because it's been done before and I read about it in other, other states too, uh, recently been done. So um, be, be, before, you know, for the, for the forum and everything, um, you know, um, I hope that somebody from Haskell is going to be there um, because they have rescued so many mobile homes that I wish that they would have rescued Royal Wood too because that's the problem one right now. Um, and I never thought that Royal Wood would ever get sold, but uh, it did and now it's, it's a problem. So anyways... Um, Unfortunately, uh, 15 years with Hasco, I learned a lot about mobile home parks. <laughs> All right, anyone else? Okay, if there's nothing else, we're going to adjourn. Thank you.